Hey guys, this is Tony Paradis. I'm a registered dietitian and certified personal trainer. Welcome to Food and Fitness. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel, go to the Facebook page and like it, and get interactive with our social media. Today's topic is going to be about the beer and ice cream diet. So what do you need to know about the beer and ice cream diet is that this is just an idea or philosophy that fits into the idea of discretionary calories or discretionary calorie allotment. And what this means is that, well, let me start off by saying that most people make dieting a lot harder than they need to. They try to cut weight very aggressively for a vacation, for a wedding, or something like that, you know, some sort of short term goal in mind. And then they end up gaining all the weight back plus more after this very strict deprivation, they just can't take it anymore, and they want to eat and eat and eat to uh, make up for that long period of deprivation. What I'm here to tell you today is that that is a detrimental way to lose weight. It leads to yo-yo dieting, it leads to binging, and just an unhealthy relationship with food. And last summer, I was able to cut down to below 10% body fat, and I'll show you guys a picture here in a minute. Uh, by eating beer and ice cream every day. Okay, so yes, I did make the pot a little bit sensationalized. It's not the beer and ice cream diet where the only thing you're going to be eating is beer and ice cream all day long. That would be awesome, but <laughs> frankly, that's a little unrealistic. We can't do that. But what I am going to tell you today is what discretionary calories are and the idea that you can fit in a certain amount of fun foods or empty calories into your diet as long as everything else is balanced. So in my situation, I really like ice cream. It was the summertime, I wanted to have the beer, and that's what I was able to work into my diet. You can make it personal to you. So the three things I'm gonna to cover today is, number one, how deprivation can be harmful. I'm gonna talk about discretionary calorie allotment, and finally, how I did the beer and ice cream diet, and give you guys some tips on how you can start applying that into your life. All right, so let's get into it. Okay, guys, so here is me last summer when I cut my weight down to get below 10% body fat, and I was able to incorporate a serving of ice cream and a beer every night, and I'm going to tell you guys how I was able to do that and how you're going to be able to use discretionary calories to make your diet into a lifestyle change. So first I want to cover is why is deprivation harmful and why can it be bad for you? And number one is the best diet is the one that you don't know that you're on. So in other words, if you don't feel like you're making sacrifices, if you don't feel like this is a grueling experience, then it's probably going to be one that you're able to live out day through day. So keep that in mind. This isn't a test of how self-disciplined you are or how hardcore you are. Guys, this is life, so make it a lifestyle change, not a diet. Um, kind of leading into that is... If you can't be okay with the way that you're eating, with the way that your diet is every day for the rest of your life, then it's not a good diet. If you don't plan on eating uh, grapefruit, like take the grapefruit diet for example, if you're not planning on eating anything but just grapefruit for the rest of your life and you're okay with that, then it's not a good diet. So deprivation is hard on both the body and the mind. It can uh, lead to catabolism of muscle, so a breakdown of muscle, uh, you can have uh, a rebound of fat gain after you're on a extended very low calorie deprivation diet and a lot of this has to do with the mind too is you're just gonna wanna binge after you've deprived yourself over a very long period of time some people may be able to deprive themselves for weeks some people for months some people only three days it really just depends on when your body's going to rebel and your mind's gonna make you binge again uh, it leads to binging and yo-yo dieting, so you're on a diet, you're off a diet, you're on a diet, you're off a diet. And this is usually because the diet that you're on is too strict and, and is focused on deprivation and not moderation. And also people deprive themselves because they're just uneducated on how nutrition works. A lot of people think that a diet has to be really hard. They think that, you know, they see the show The Biggest Loser and they're, you know, eating nothing but fish and vegetables and burning 2,000 calories a day, that that's the way it's got to be if you got a lot of weight to lose. Let me tell you guys, it doesn't, and if you do try a method that incorporates deprivation, you're just going to gain the weight back. So that's why it's harmful, and that's why in the long term it's just not effective. 
So what is discretionary calorie allotment and what does that mean for you? The majority of your calories, 80 to 90 percent, should come from wholesome, nutrient-dense choices. So I didn't mean to get you guys excited by talking about the beer and ice cream diet and insinuating that that's all we're going to eat. No. 80 to 90 percent of your diet is going to come from wholesome and nutrient-dense choices. So this is things like lean meats, vegetables, whole grains, nuts, minimally processed foods, um, things that are really high in micronutrients. And micronutrients are your vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals, all these healthy things that come from plants, that come from whole foods. Okay? But if 80-90% of your calories comes from wholesome foods, that means that 10-20% to of your calories can come from nutrient um, dense or empty calories. So it's up to you. If you just really don't have a craving for beer and ice cream, you can eat another chicken breast. Okay, you can eat another serving of vegetables and fill up those 10 to 20 percent of your calories. But if you're like me or if you're like most people, you want to be able to incorporate some fun foods and some guilty pleasures every single day or every other day or whatever frequency you want to do that at. This helps people stay on track for the long run and it's also a very effective way of incorporating moderation and also this does require some attention to get right if you're not going to just wing it unless you're very experienced with counting calories with understanding a calorie budget first of all if you want to know how many discretionary calories you get you should probably know how many calories you need in a day to reach your target goal so it does require a little bit of math and a little bit of pre-planning but it's a small sacrifice to make for being able to incorporate foods that you enjoy rather than putting yourself on a strict meal plan okay so discretionary calories how to let me give you guys an example of what I did and I was able to lose weight on 2000 calories a day I was exercising as well so 2000 calories was the number for me 10 to 20 percent of 2,000 calories is about 2 to 400 calories that I could use at my discretion. So an average beer is about 150 calories and a cup of ice cream is 280 calories. So that's 430 calories and to me that was close enough uh, to what I was trying to achieve. I wasn't getting ready for a, a bodybuilding show or, um, or a magazine photo shoot or anything like that so I didn't have to be too strict on myself I just wanted to look good for summer so here's how I did it with food uh, I'm a big fan of intermittent fasting and the idea of that is that you can choose when you want to eat your calories and when you don't if you want to skip breakfast so you can eat more calories later in the day that's basically the gist of it so for me when I'm cutting weight I'm not a really big breakfast eater um, it's never been my most favorite meal of the day or something that I just woke up and really looked forward to. So for me, I was able to just have a cup of black coffee just to hold me over through lunch. Uh, for lunch, on average, I would go to Chipotle and get a 1,000-calorie burrito. Sounds like a lot, but remember, I'm, a I'm on a 2,000-calorie diet, and I've already skipped breakfast. So this was very uh, mentally satisfying to me to be able to have a feast uh, every single day. Uh, that I was uh, cutting weight and so at a thousand calories that really hit the spot and it made me feel like I was eating an abundance of food. So remember that your diet should also appeal to your psychology as well as your fitness goals. And then for dinner that would be a little more moderate. I'd have a lean meat uh, with non-starchy vegetables and that'd give me about 600 uh, calories worth and then for the rest of those 400 calories I would use ice cream, beer, or whatever it was that I wanted to be able to enjoy myself, I didn't do this every single day. Some days I didn't feel like having a beer or I was um, not feel like having an ice cream. So I might have had more vegetables or I might have had uh, serving a rice or something with dinner. But this is what I did most of the time. And I did it just to prove a point, just to prove that, hey, you can have fun every single day on a nutrition program and still reach the goals that you want and I did it by using discretionary calorie allotment okay so here's what I did as far as exercise I did a full body workout three times per week 
Um, pretty busy, so I'm not a big fan of the five, six day splits. I like to go in and hit everything all at once. That fits my personality and my preferences. I didn't do any cardio, no treadmill, no elliptical, anything like that. If you dial your diet in, you don't need to do stuff like that. And then also no carbohydrate deprivation. So in that picture that I showed you guys, I didn't cut carbohydrates for that. Uh, that was just eating um, a, a moderate amount of carbohydrates throughout the day. I don't really believe in cutting water weight unless you have a photo shoot or something like that. And also no worries, meaning it's about a lifestyle change. It's about doing what you enjoy. I wasn't obsessing about the scale. I wasn't obsessing about my weight or how I looked in the mirror. I use those things as guidelines, as benchmarks, but uh, don't get too focused on your results. Try to get focused on the process, and that's where you're going to be successful. Okay, so here I am again uh, with my ice cream, with my beer, and let's talk about some tips and tricks so that you guys can start incorporating this into your life and be able to achieve these sorts of results while also being flexible with your diet. Which leads me to my, lex my next point is flexibility with discretionary calories. Uh, flexibility is relative to the individual. So let's say that you're a fitness model or uh, you're getting ready for a bodybuilding competition or uh, you're getting ready for a weight class sport that has weigh-ins like wrestling or boxing or something like that yes you're going to be more strict okay and the closer you get to that event you're gonna really tighten things up and be more strict but for the average person that just wants to look good all year round you can be a lot more flexible with your diet uh, eat more discretionary calories on some days and less on others if you choose just make sure that it's balanced so another thing that I like to do is if I don't feel like having a, a small amount of sweets or uh, an alcoholic beverage every day is what I'll do is I'll go three or four days and just eat pretty moderately and then I'll relax more on the weekends or um, on a day that I choose to uh, be able to have more of those discretionary calories. So just make sure that it's balanced and have some sort of consistency with what it is that you do. And I also want to make a point that discretionary calories are still within range of your target calories for the day. This is not the same as a cheat meal or a free day or, in other words, a binge. What discretionary calories does is it allows you to stay within your certain calorie allotment while being flexible with where those calories come from. So that's the difference between discretionary calories and a cheat meal or binging or something like that. So I wanted to make that point. Uh, clear. So applying discretionary calories to your goals. I'm going to give you guys some examples of how you can use this in your life. So ladies, you probably will not be losing weight on a 2,000 calorie diet. Or some of you smaller people out there, is your calorie allotment for discretionary calories is going to be reflective of the amount of total calories that you have for the day. So for example, if you have a 1,200 calorie diet, 120 to 240, 10 to 20% of that diet is going to be discretionary calories. So you probably won't be able to fit in an ice cream and a beer every single day unless you're willing to make some compromises there. So you can also make lower calorie choices and still get the kind of flavor, the kind of satisfaction that you want and, and still be smart about it. So you'll just have to use these calories more wisely, which brings me to my next point. For example, instead of ice cream, you could try a frozen yogurt. Or even further down the line, you could try a frozen fruit bar. Or one of those skinny cow ice cream sandwiches. Uh, there's, there's a lot of different options out there for you guys. If you want to make a wiser choice, uh, you certainly can and get that flavor that you want, get that satisfaction that you want from that meal. Uh, instead of a beer, you could try a shot of alcohol with a zero calorie mixer. Remember that pure alcohol is going to be uh, for for gram per gram of alcohol is going to be lower in calories compared to something that has extra carbohydrates added to it like a beer or a margarita or something like that. So those are just some ways that you guys can make smarter choices with your calories when you're using a discretionary calorie allotment. So let's conclude my presentation on discretionary calories and my rendition of the beer and ice cream diet. Being extra strict does not equal better results in the long run.
Okay, if you have to be strict for a short period of time, if you have a very specific goal in mind, sure, I understand that, and your efforts should be reflective of your goals. But if you're just trying to get into shape, if you're just trying to be lean, if you're trying to achieve a long-term sustainable uh, body type and look that you're going for, guys, you need to be flexible with your approach. I can't emphasize this enough that if your diet is unrealistic, if it's not something that you enjoy, you're not going to stick with it. Maybe you'll stick with it for a long time for a year. Maybe you'll stick with it for still a long time for a month, maybe a week or maybe a couple of days, but eventually you're going to get tired of eating things that you don't enjoy. So if you don't learn how to use moderation now, it's going to be harder to, to incorporate that when you're off your diet, when you start binging, when you don't have any practice and real life experience using moderation. So it's not just, oh, most people aren't dedicated enough, so let's change the rules of, of how dieting is supposed to work so that you know the, the average overweight American can lose some weight and feel good about him or herself. No, this isn't about you know lowering the bar. This is about comparing it to a super strict diet and what gets you the best results in the long run is being a little bit flexible. End of story. All right, my second point I'd like to make in my conclusion is that a little bit of planning goes a long way. You have to know your goals and how to achieve them. How many discretionary calories do you get? Well, you're going to have to figure out how many calories you need in order to achieve your goal. So do the math, put in a little bit of work, do your homework, and like they say, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. It's better to put a little bit of work up in the front and see your results multiplied the rest of your program then have to constantly patchwork things. And finally, don't make it a diet, make it a lifestyle. Because at the end of the day, this is your life and it's something that you should enjoy. Don't make a grueling diet something that you feel is a chore, that you feel like you're not going to be able to do forever because you're exactly right. You won't be able to do it forever. And that's why the beer and ice cream diet works. That's why it worked for me. It was able to get me below 10% body fat a couple summers ago, and it's going to work for you guys. So whether you want beer, whether you want ice cream, cupcakes, hot dogs, baked beans, Twinkies, cheesecake, whatever it is, figure out a way to incorporate a small amount of, a small amount of it into your diet. Figure out how to use moderation and how to make it from a diet into a lifestyle change, and that's where you're going to have long-term success. Thanks for watching. My name is Tony Paradis, registered dietitian and certified personal trainer with Food and Fitness. Guys, check out our website at foodandfitnessonline.com. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Like us on Facebook. You know the drill. Support us, and we'll keep making these videos. Always open to topics for uh, our next videos. If you guys got any suggestions, just email me those through the website or make a comment below. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.